Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Downey and today we're going to talk about testosterone tablets. So what are testosterone tablets and do they work? So oral testosterone or oral testosterone undecanoate is what it's commonly referred to is not really spoken about in the community and that's because it's just assumed that it's pointless because it has unfavorable pharmacokinetics and it isn't very bioavailable and things like that but which is true for the most part but it also has interesting effects and it isn't pointless in any regard so i'm just going to explain how you use it as a testosterone replacement me therapy method um and in my next video i will be discussing its potential for cycle use but obviously not promoting that so testosterone undecanoate is the name, undecanoate being the ester. Um, it's commonly in these pills that are fat soluble, so it's paired with castor oil to increase the absorption. And interestingly, it's not absorbed through the vascular system or portal venous system, so it doesn't go from, because when things are absorbed from the gut, they go to the liver. And that's why regular testosterone or crystalline testosterone once absorbed is immediately absorbed through the vascular system and the liver just detoxifies or oh, metabolizes it instantly making the bioavailable availability almost zero however with testosterone undecanoate you it isn't absorbed through the portal venous system it's actually absorbed through the lymphatic system and that's why it's best to take with fat. So I'll explain that now. So it is esterified with undecanoate, which makes it more lipophilic, meaning it likes fat pathways. And the lymphatic system absorbs a lot of the fat from the digestive system. So it kind of bypasses absorption via the portal venous system, so it doesn't go through the liver, it goes into the lymphatic system, then it comes up here and it drains into your, cir uh, your circulation. And as I mentioned, it must be taken when you eat. Um, that's because eating it with fat increases its absorption since more fat will be absorbed and so will it. And they found in a study that between 18 grams of fat and 45 grams of fat is the range you want. 18 being the very minimum you need to get the best absorption of it and 45 grams being the most they didn't find there was better absorption from there but the more fat you have the better the absorption so as i mentioned at the beginning of this video the bioavailability is extremely poor it's only about seven percent of that which is ingested is used in the body um, so that's important to take into account when using the, when calculating the dose you need. Um, not only that, the ester undecanoate is very heavy. So of the total milligram bases, so if you have 240 milligrams of testosterone undecanoate, only 60 to 65 percent of that will be actual testosterone. The rest is the weight of the ester it's, it, it's attached to. The problem with these two is that that means dosages get quite high and this makes it quite expensive to use. It isn't cheap <laughs> at all. So the common doses uh, range from 80 milligrams to 240 milligrams daily. They come in 40 milligram tablets um, and essentially it's taken daily and what you want to get is around equivalent of 5 milligrams to 9 milligrams of actual active testosterone because that's how much your body produces every day. Um, once ingested, uh, peak values will peak at around two to six hours, and then they sharply decline thereafter. So its half-life is about two to six hours. So it needs to be taken multiple times a day. This would suggest three to four time daily in, um, dosing, essentially. Um, and they looked in studies and they found that it takes about three days to reach a steady state of hormone levels. But again, they found in these studies that the steady state wasn't really steady and it was 
very susceptible to a lot of fluctuations with peaks and drops below level or peaks above level then drops below level and it's very short-lived. That was the problem with it. It had these peaks and drops and peaks and drops. But in the studies they still remain reported or well, each individual reported a positive mood and libido had increased which means which to me makes sense because um, testosterone seems to be almost pulsatile it isn't but it almost mimics the body's own production of testosterone because some days it's higher and some days sometimes it's lower um, 90 percent of it is eliminated through the kidneys this is not surprising but it is mostly metabolized in the liver but remember elimination and metabolism are not the same it's the same with anivar anivar is eliminated through the kidneys don't know about metabolize, uh, metabolism but there is a problem with it and that comes in the form of dht the problem is at the gut lining the intestine actually has five alpha reductase and a third of that in which you ingest is converted immediately to dht and then absorbed so a third of that dose is converted or into DHT and DHT still is active but it just means you might have higher DHT levels however in studies they only showed that there was a slight increase in DHT there also was a slight increase in estrogen using this type of formulation what's interesting to note however is that the changes to LH and FSH, the gonadotrophins, which would decrease if you are suppressed by the compounds you're taking, actually don't change much. Um, they're either slightly decreased or not changed at all. In an eighth month study, they were barely changed, and that was eight months of testosterone, oral testosterone. So the reason I think there isn't much suppression noted with oral testosterone is that the values kind of peak and then drop so a peak would suppress feedback whereas then it they tend to because there are so many peaks and drops it goes up quickly and down quickly and then you're below range again and when you're below range your pituitary is like okay i need to start working so you're never at a very high steady state or you're never actually at a steady state and this might be the reason why there isn't much change, but that's just hypothetical. In terms of side effects, you typically get the androgenic side effects, although there weren't a lot of side effects reported. Um, and remember, these side effects are at a therapeutic dose. Um, it's not liver toxic, as we mentioned, it doesn't actually pass through the liver. And it doesn't completely <laughs> skew your lipid profile like most orals would, but that's because it isn't metabolized in the liver. But it does decrease, it, it does, it has been shown to decrease and increase LDL, but HDL seems to be decreased ever so slightly. There is mild hyper hypertrophy with the prostate, however they noted there were no symptoms associated with this hypertrophy and PSA levels did not change. There were no changes uh, in hematocrit and hemoglobin um, in some studies, but in others slowed a very slight but significant increase in hematocrit, it was about 0.02 or something. Um, there isn't much data regarding its effect on fertility. Some studies have shown that it actually improves fertility using the rebound effect and others reporting no change or a partial decrease. Um, they also mentioned that there are no changes in blood pressure and in terms of muscle mass um, or gains, this is at a therapeutic dose. In elderly men, it did increase muscle mass as well as they de uh, they lost fat mass, but their strength didn't change. And that's just interesting to note and to be expected with exogenous testosterone administration. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below. And this is just an overview of oral testosterone, which will be necessary for my next video when I talk about supraphysiological oral testosterone and its possible uses. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.